So I want to show you Nancy Pelosi after she passed. It, she engineered and passed. Remember, nothing gets passed. No laws get passed unless Nancy Pelosi says so. That's how powerful she is. So no bill gets brought to the floor to get voted on, debated, talked about anything unless Nancy Pelosi thinks it's OK. So she's the one who's been engineering. If you're at home right now and you're afraid, why don't why isn't the United States giving me a cash payment every month like the rest of the world is doing for their workers when the government tells their businesses they have to close down? The reason is because Nancy Pelosi, she's stopping it. Hey, why don't they give us health care like the rest of the world already has for when a pandemic hits? They don't have to worry about losing their health care in the middle of a pandemic. They already have a system that provides them health care. Why don't we have that? Nancy Pelosi. That's who's stopping. That's who's in the way. It's not Mitch McConnell. It's not Steve Mnuchin. It's Nancy Pelosi. And the Democrats will not call her out. Guess who calls her out? Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper says, hey, you extracted nothing. You got no concessions from the Republicans. You put a bunch of stuff on the bill that they were okay with. You got funding for hospitals. They were okay with that. Here, well, listen to what he says. You and Senator Schumer made this major concession on the most recent legislation uh, because you, you it made it okay so in this yeah. one. for the, It wasn't a concession. No, well, I mean, here, Governor the, Andrew Cuomo, let me give the... I understand what Andrew Cuomo said, and I, I respect his perspective as a governor, but the fact is this. They wanted 250 for the PPP. We support the PPP. We're part of developing it. Uh, small business is entrepreneurial, part of the uh, uh, optimism of America. So we're for that. But we wanted to include more people and more money for the program and for the hospital. So it was an, right, always no, I, an interim I, bill. It was always an interim bill. We always said that seek, uh, CARES 2 would be the bill where we would go to, uh, for state and local. Right. And we will. I, in a I, big I, way. So I don't know if you could hear that, Danny, what she's saying. We always said that CARES 2, the second stimulus, would be where we took care of small businesses. What? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you take care of small businesses first? Why wouldn't you take care of people's health care first? Why wouldn't you make sure cash payments to people first? This is all garbage. And Jake, Ta Jake Tapper... I'll, I'm going to give him credit. At least he pushed back a little. Mm -hmm. Nobody at MSNBC will do this. Uh, so here, here comes a little bit more to this. I, I, I get that, but I just want to play for you the sound from New York Governor Cuomo because he said he needs money for his state to save New York from an economic tsunami. Uh, take a listen to what yes. he had to say. We've been talking about funding for state and local governments. And it was not in the bill that the House is going to pass today. They said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, the next bill. I said to my colleagues in Washington, I would have insisted that state and local funding was in this current bill. I would have insisted that health care was in this bill. I would have insisted that the, the post office save, saving was in this bill. I would have said that a rent freeze was in this bill. I would have said mortgage uh, foreclosure relief was in this bill. I would have said a bunch of stuff that would have but I would have demanded add payments to cities. They demanded nothing. They got nothing for you. Nothing. And here, so here's what she has to say about that. She, watch, watch the gaslighting she does. Because I don't believe they want to fund state and local governments. So Cuomo says he would have insisted on state funding uh, in the last bill. You, 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 and now Senator McConnell is saying he wants to push. So do you see what a handcuff it puts through? Hey, there's a Democrat saying that and didn't call her out by name. All he had to do was say they should have. And now Jake Tapper picks that up and repeats it. Do you see how that if Nancy, if AOC or Rashida Tlaib or Ro Khanna would crit, or Bernie Sanders would criticize the Democratic leadership? Then the news reporters, that gives them freedom to repeat it and say this guy said it. So if the Democratic of a progressive politician won't criticize their leadership, It'll never get repeated on a TV show, and it's never happening. It took Andrew Cuomo to say this shit. So let's watch what she says. The pause button. Uh, yes. Was this a tactical mistake by you and Senator Schumer? Just calm down. We will have state and local, and we will have it. Did you hear what she, she tells Jake Tapper? Just calm down. In the middle of a pandemic where they're screwing everyone except the oligarchs. Calm down. You're going to get it. Danny, can you, uh, Dan, I'm here with Danny Heifung from the Black Agenda Report. That My jaw is on the floor. I can't even get over that she said that. 
Calm down. Mm-hmm. Calm down. In the middle of a pandemic where people are fucking shitting their pants because they don't know what they're doing and, and they've got no income, they've got no health care, they don't know what to do, and Nancy Pelosi's telling you to calm down while she's eating ice cream in front of a $40,000 refrigerator. I throw it to Danny from the Black Agenda Report. It looks like another Trump ad to me that uh, Trump will <laughs> inevitably use this kind of material. I mean, the deer in the headlights look that you see from her when Jake Capper is asking uh, one of the few questions that he ever asks, which represents any sort of real journalism, uh, asking her to talk about real concessions that she made and that her party made to the Republican Party. Um, and her answer is calm down. <laughs> Uh, oh, we're no. all into the ent- entrepreneurial spirit of small business. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, fuck you, workers. Fuck you, poor people. Fuck you, tens of thousands of people who are dying and the tens of thousands more who are losing loved ones. Fuck you, essential, quote unquote, essential workers. Fuck you, healthcare workers. That's what uh, she is ultimately saying when she goes on CNN and talks to Jake Tapper, who wants to be friendly with her, but he's throwing her softballs. And she's making them look like really good, critical questions uh, thrown to her. When in fact, uh, all she is showing is that uh, she has absolutely no solutions to this crisis, that she's okay with all of the concessions that have been given to the Republican Party. And I wouldn't even call them concessions. I would just call them points of agreement at the end of the day. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. There, they, there wasn't a negotiation. They just they, they, they all agreed on what happened. The Republicans agreed with everything in this bill, and so does Nancy Pelosi. And more importantly, the Republicans agree with everything that's not in this bill, and so does Nancy Pelosi. What's not in this bill? Uh, health care for workers, uh, any kind of pay or any kind of help for the essential workers who are on the front lines right now. Nothing. There's no uh, c- direct cash payments. There's no credit card relief. There's no uh, rent relief. There's no mortgage relief. There's no nothing. There's nothing in this bill. Nothing for the post office. No, nothing. And she comes out and says, calm down. It, it, and... um. And you still, you still and you still, you're going to turn on I, 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 and go on Twitter and go on MSNBC. And you're going to see people saying, go, go, yay, queen, yay, queen. Go get them. That's what they say to her on Twitter. So here she is now. And here she is endorsing Joe Biden. So this is from ABC News. And uh, just in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi endorses Joe Biden for president of the United States, calling him a leader who is the perf- personification of hope and courage, values, authenticity and in- integrity. Joe Biden. Now, there, there's there's few people in the country who are worse human beings than Joe Biden, let alone a, a good person or a leader. He's a horrible, horrible, horrible person, a sociopathic liar who has screwed over p- workers at the behest of banks and insurance companies. And he's murdered hundreds of thousands of people as a warmongering war criminal that he is. And he tortured Chelsea Manning. I mean, just a million horrible things that he's done. But hey, that's the guy we we got to embrace because Trump. <laughs> what do you say to her endorsing him? Totally predictable. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is a hundred millionaire. She works for the same corporate class that Joe Biden works for, that he serves, is so dutifully loyal to. And... I think what's really interesting in this moment, especially in relation to the stimulus bill and Pelosi's uh, response to Clapper, is that it shows, uh, or Tapper, Jake Tapper, it shows that, you know, in times of crises, uh, not only is the capitalist class looking to destroy what semblance of a middle class, so-called middle class exists, but they're also trying to consolidate um, amongst themselves, right? There's always a concentration of political power and a concentration of economic capital. And it's interesting to see someone like Andrew Cuomo a uh, flank to the left of Nancy <laughs> Pelosi in order to serve his own political career. Because at the end of the day, look what Andrew Cuomo has done to New York State. I mean, he is just as much uh, culpable as the rest of the Democratic yes. Party and the rest of Washington in the fact that so many of the deaths from COVID-19 have occurred right here in this state and in this city of New York City. Um, but because there is this competition going on, even though they all like to say that they're all together, they're all in it together, uh, Cuomo has dreams of 
of being what Nancy Pelosi is, the leader of the Democratic Party. And Nancy Pelosi is just was not ready uh, to take the heat from uh, Jake Tapper. And uh, she ultimately lost that battle. So even as there are those who are saying, yes, Queen, yes, uh, Nancy Pelosi, there will be a lot more who will say, wow, Andrew Cuomo is far superior to Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party leadership in this time. Maybe he's the future. And I think that is so critical to understand and examine in this time when you have someone like Joe Biden who can barely speak and barely talk and barely think um, as the candidate for the 2020 election. Um, it's uh, I. Imagine if Nancy Pelosi got a hard question once in a while at MSNBC. Imagine that. I mean, we just saw Jake Tapper push back in the itty, itty bitty bit and it exposed her. To calm down. She's telling people to calm down. You'll get your 100 millionaire is telling people to calm down. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, but you know who didn't have to wait? The richest people in the country. Yeah, I know. Just imagine. Just imagine. Um, well, Danny, I really appreciate you being our guest. Uh, Danny Haifong from Black Agenda Report. And uh, we've covered, uh, you know, you have, you have a great book out. Everyone should, should read American Exceptionalism and American Innocence. Uh, it really explains uh, the, what the culture is, how we got here, the thinking, how imperialism works. How It's really a great book. Everybody should pick it up. Danny Haifung over at the Black Agenda Report. Anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Well, I'll just say that we can end on a positive note. Uh, there is a worldwide movement out there, and I always stress this so much because, um, you know, you'll see Vietnam right now getting coverage in terms of their COVID-19 response. You'll see, but you won't see how much of these socialist countries that the United States hates so much whether we like to think of them as socialist or not. I think the U.S. has a big problem with trying to uh, tell other countries what to do and how they're organizing themselves without any evidence uh, to their arguments. But, you know, when you have countries like Vietnam, Cuba, even Venezuela under sanctions, uh, being able to address this pandemic in a way where not only are, is life preserved, but people have what they need in a time of crisis, that it should show us uh, what is necessary, and that is power. Uh, right. So working people have power, uh, have much more power in Venezuela than they do here. Working people in Vietnam. I mean, you don't you don't lose three million people to an imperialist invasion and then beat that imperialist invasion unless working people have some power in that country. And that power is what allows for some really good things to happen. So I think that if we can figure out how in this context we can organize for that power, we'll be in a lot better shape and we'll be able to move past um uh, the politics of the two-party corporate duopoly. Do you think we will be able to? Do you think what Jane McLevy said on our show that she thinks she predicts there'll be a lot more strikes before the election, a lot more after, just like there was in 1932 and 1933, that led to FDR implementing the New Deal? Do you do you are you do you feel uh, 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 um, optimistic about that scenario playing out? That workers actually realize their power, and that there is actually leaders that rise up, and we actually do take control. I think it's inevitable that there will be some form of rebellion uh, very soon in the United States. Uh, we've been due for it for a long time. And I believe that working people will play a leading role in that rebellion. And it's going, but it's going to take a lot of organizing and it's going to take a lot of education as well. I think that political education is one of the most important things we need to do right now and to spread that political education to the masses because crises don't always lead to better times for working class people. And so we need to be cognizant of that. But I, I do think that there is a real possibility out of this that uh, the conditions will be even more ripe for uh, a social movement, uh, for massive social unrest to occur, where there will be more possibilities for our organizations and our uh, demands to be heard. I am not optimistic that the capitalist system will meet those demands. I do not believe that at this stage that there will be such a thing as a new deal coming from the capitalist class. But I do think that there will be a rebellion that will demand that, a movement that will demand these things. And then it's at that point where 
the real struggle actually begins because uh, it will take a lot of organizing and education to ensure that people don't fall into despair and uh, don't um, just throw up their hands and give up. I think that's the the biggest thing it, it, because then we need to model out what society comes next because I don't believe that the capitalist system will provide it for us. Hey, this is the part where I tell you where our live shows are, but there aren't any. <laughs> and then I would tell you to go join our premium, but, but nobody has a fucking job. So why don't you just enjoy the video?